Hey Fit Like YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Dead Man's Chest. Okay, it's been <laughs> quite a while since I've done a proper video, but uh, yep, back to full strength, so the videos should be coming a bit more regular. However, my laptop is completely buggered, so unfortunately I kind of do what I would like to do for my videos, so I've just got to kind of make do with my phone. So hopefully it's better than nothing. Um, in regards to the tank, everything's been doing really good. Fish are all perfectly healthy, um, no problems there. Corals, yep, same thing. Growing and looking really good. There is a couple of things that are not so good, and I'll go into them in a bit. But overall, I'm very pleased with how the tank's going and to be honest this tank has been an absolute dream it basically runs itself um i maybe do one water change a month and that's about it um a lot of new equipment which obviously is helping with the maintenance side of things so i've got new heaters i've got new lights i've got a new return pump got a new dozing unit, five stage, new skimmer, new UV, uh, new new flow pumps. So quite a lot of new equipment since the, the last video before my accident. But I'll make a separate video for all the equipment because let's face it, you don't want to listen to me going on and on and on. <laughs> 15 minutes of my voice is bad enough <laughs> so but yep uh, the aquascape since that last video before my accident you'll notice has totally changed I redid the right hand side and the, the middle and created a lot more caves which has helped out a lot um, all the fish have got their own little hidey holes at night time so everybody is nice and happy and it makes for a peaceful tank that way so there's no fighting over territory um, so yep, fish wise, I know that the uh, the two tongs are probably going to get a bit big for this size of tank, however, I do plan on upgrading in the future and I'll probably just upgrade to like a four foot tank, I don't want nothing massive like the, uh, the Black Pearl, um, this tank has been, like I said, an absolute dream, it's perfect, but obviously I don't really want to get rid of my fish when they get too big, so I will upgrade, but I'm only going to go like an extra foot, so that's about it. Um, but that's like a way down the line, because the convict tank, he's very, very small just now. He's, he was the same size as, well, just a wee bit bigger than one of the damsels, to be honest, but he's not growing that fast. The yellow tank, it was in a bad way when I got him. Um, however, I've managed to get him really nice and fat and he's doing super so yep so now a couple of bad things uh, one bad thing is Aptasia oh it's a bloody nightmare it's doing my head in to be honest I've got you'll probably notice um, I've got five peppermint shrimp needing nothing I've got a Aptasia eating file fish needing nothing and I think the only way I could get him to actually eat the Aptasia is if I starve him. However, I don't want to do that because it means the other fish are going to suffer. So I don't want to do that. Um, oh, you'll notice the cracking creeping out the side of the tank there. <laughs> but yeah, so Aptasia is a pain in the butt, I've got to be honest. I've currently used an Aptasia X. It gets rid of it, but they're still coming back. Um, I've tried Joe's Juice as well, and out of the two, I kind of prefer Aptasia X from Rip by Red Sea. It seems to be the better one of the two, in my opinion. However, they come back because there's Aptasias that you kind of reach, and obviously they're just spawning. Um, so you're kind of relying on your critters and whatever to get rid of them. But unfortunately, my luck with peppermint shrimps just not happening. The file fish, maybe it's because he's too small. I don't know, he's not doing that either, so the only other alternative would be to get a copper band, which 
let's be honest, I'm not I'm not keen on going down that route because they're off a fragile fish at the best of times. Plus, my tank's too small for it, and uh, yeah, so kind of sucks. I, I'm kind of uh, pulling my foot, my last few hairs on the top of my head, <laughs> um, as to what to do, but. That's one, That's I would say that's one of the biggest pains in my butt just now. And there is another one, which I'll go into a wee bit later on in the video. And it's probably not what you're expecting. So, but uh, overall, the tank's doing great. I'm very happy with it. And there has been very little um, problems. It's just the it's, that's the only, That's the main thing, it's just doing my head in, to be honest. Everything else is fine. And, yep, so fish-wise I've got yellow tongue, a convict tongue, a flame angel, a cleaner ras, um, an azure damsel. I've still got the two platinum clownfish. I've still got phantom, the zebra goby. Um, I think there's three peppermint sh shrimp left now. Two actually got caught in the, the new AI pumps. And I've had them since I, since the very first came out. And I would say that's one of the drawbacks is the openings on the back of those pumps. They're a bit too big. So small, I've lost a small fish to that as well. Um, and it's I would say that's one of the downsides to them, to those pumps. They could do with the, the holes in the back of them being a bit smaller. Because I've lost two peppermint shrimp, I've lost a fish to it as well. So that kind of sucks, um, but yeah, and I've also got a pair of mandarin gobies, mandarin dragonettes, uh, male and female, so they're really cool. Um, they were like super skinny when I got them, but I've had them in quarantine for, it was well over a month, just getting them beefed up on pods and stuff. Put them in here and they're slowly starting to put some weight on, which is great. They're difficult to capture and film because they're quite um, sneaky and there's because there's so many caves and hidey holes in this tank now. Um, but I will get some footage of them and I'll add on to this video. And I think fish-wise, I think that's pretty much it, to be honest. Um, oh, aye, there's a chalk goby as well. Okay, thought I'd give you a look at a top-down view of the tank. Uh, one of my favourite views, and I think this is one of the perks of having your tank next to a stairs. So you can just climb up the stairs and you just can sit there, and I sit there for hours just staring at the fish after I've fed them and stuff. Um, a lot of the corals, well, pretty much every coral, as you know, I've started from a frog. Um, this is the Duncan, the very the exact same Duncan as I got when I first started the tank. I think there's last count there was over 170 heads on it. Um, it's just a beast of a thing now. And it's getting very close to touching my uh, Sunset mil Millipora. So I'm kind of a wee bit nervous about that. Like, But so far I've managed to get the flow. So the flow, the way the flow is going is keeping it away from the the Sunset Millipora, so that's pretty good. So I'll just give you a wee scan of the top of the tank here. It's kind of difficult to focus because the lights are kind of more bluish just now. And this is that Sunset Millipora that I was on about. Um, it did start off really pink, but now it's kind of changed to purple. And there's the side of the tank. This is one of my favourite views. Um, you'll probably notice from the last video the trumpet. So I've had to move it here because unfortunately it was starting to get stung and losing some heads due to the Recordia Floridas on the other side. But it seems to be doing really well on this side, so that's good. My little zoa garden. It's kind of getting out of control now and a lot of zoas are just overgrowing other zoas sort of thing. So it's weird because every now and again you'll see them chop and change like can one minute the greens are taken over and then the oranges are taken over it's <laughs> it, it, it varies it just depends what mood they're in I suppose
Okay, so for the second problem in my tank, and believe it or not, it's this guy. This rose bubble tip anemone it has been an absolute pain in the arse. And thankfully it's kind of stuck here now. Um, it stopped moving, however it did move up and down this cave. Stung the hell out of a heap of corals. Um, unfortunately one of those corals that took a major hit was my strawberry shortcake. Which totally sucks. Um, but yeah, this if I could go rewind the clock, I certainly would never have added this uh, bubble tip to the tank. Climb fish, they're not even interested in it anyway, um, which was the whole point of me getting it. However, um, as long as it buys here, uh, it could be alright, but it does extend a bit bigger than you're actually seeing here, so it has actually stung underneath my red planet there a few times, um, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I just can't get, I just can't get it out of that location. And it spawns babies every month, which, again, is another pain in the arse. So, yeah, that's a problem I've got to kind of figure out. But so far, I'll just leave it be just now. Okay, as promised, I've managed to capture some footage of the pair of mandarin gobies. Mandarin dragonettes. The female seems to be more orange and the male more green with a higher dorsal fin. But they're absolutely fascinating to watch, especially at night time when the lights start to go down. Uh, they seem to get together and <laughs> it's really cool to watch. Still very much dependent on the live copepods. However, I do have a refugium which is totally helping keep, uh, keep them fully fed and hoping to get them onto frozen. They do eat frozen lobster eggs just now, but uh, they're still very much dependent on the live copepods. But yeah, these are like probably my two favorite fish in the tank at the moment. Really cool, love watching them, love the colors. Uh, just trying to get them a bit far. Okay, well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, shipmates, and until the next one, bye-bye.